Jeff will encode these performance and LDP machine here for another uh, Tech Tip Tuesday. Uh, if you recognize this engine, we've used it in a couple videos for degree and cam and checking valve the piston. We just ran through and adjusted the valves and said, hey, let's go ahead and do a quick video on uh, valve adjustment. Um, so this engine set up the degree wheels on it uh, and we use the degree wheel to actually uh, adjust the valves based on fire and order. Um, most people don't have that luxury, but if you're following our video and you uh, check out the piston and degree your cam, you got the degree wheel set up, it's an excellent way to do it. But uh, I'm also gonna show you an alternative method um, that's uh, used on uh, all large cams on gas engines and I follow it on all diesel stuff. Um, you know, we would look at service manual for uh, uh, any diesel, it'll tell you get the engine on TDC number one compression and you can run uh, valves on half of the cylinders, roll it 180 and you can uh, adjust the other half. That's figured with a factory cam. When you're putting an aftermarket cam in that's got different lobe separation angle and or uh, you know more duration, you can't always follow that and get yourself in trouble doing that. So the method that we use, uh, the order doesn't necessarily matter. You roll the engine clockwise. When the exhaust valve on a cylinder just begins to open, you do the intake on that cylinder. Uh, you know, your exhaust stroke is first and then you have uh, intake. So when you catch the exhaust on the opening, when you're just starting to come up on the lobe, the intake is still gonna be on the backside. So you do your intake, uh, roll the engine clockwise. And when you get the intake valve on that same cylinder, fully open and just starting to close. So you're just getting on the backside of the intake lobe, you do your exhaust. Uh, it's easy. Um, if you know the firing order, once you catch a couple of them, you can you know figure out the rest from there. But you just turn the engine over and just watch as soon as you see an exhaust valve start to open, you do that intake. And then um, if you got four eyes and you're ambitious, you can roll it and catch more as you go. Uh, an easy way to do it is just when you do the exhaust, just roll the engine and then catch the intake um, you know, on the back side of the lobe. So again, fully open. Uh, starting to close and do the exhaust in that same cylinder. If you do it that way, one sort of time, you're gonna you know, have a couple of revolutions, but it works good. Um, also, when I do it that way, I'll mark, I'll use a paint marker Sharpie and I'll mark every valve as I go. So I know they've been adjusted and then I'll keep checking them too as I'm going. Um, but as we said, we have the degree wheel on here. So with the degree wheel on, TDC, verify on compression, uh, on number one, that you're on compression stroke, you can adjust both valves on number one. Um, so I'll just show you the tools needed for adjusting valves varies from engine to engine, but one thing that's really cool, uh, I've got this gear wrench set. It's a hollow socket set. Uh, it's awesome for adjusting valves because you can put your screwdriver down through it and it's ratcheting. So I love this. I use the heck out of it, especially on, on Cummins. I always use it. And then a Cummins, a flathead screwdriver, Duramax, you need a uh, uh, Allen socket. And then as far as feeler gauges go, Snap-on has this new set out. It comes with uh, four handles. It comes with straight blades. And then it comes with a go, no go, uh, step straight. And then it comes with uh, angled uh, blades. So these just come out and they're awesome. They're really handy for doing valve adjustment. Cause with the go, no go, we're wanting to set this intake at 14. So I've got 14 and the other side is 16. So 14, nice and snug, 16 won't go. You know, you're on at 14. Um, so these are cool. So again, we're on number one, we're set up. So intake, we'll check it. And we've already adjusted these, so we'll check it, but we cannot get the 16 in there. Um, and then we go over to exhaust, we got the 22, the 24 won't go. Um, I typically like to hear a little snap. Uh, when I get it in there right and you pull it out, just a little snap, you know that there's uh, no lash and it's accurate. So, um, so with, you know, with this engine, with the degree wheel on, um, we're on number one. So we go on our fire order, number five is next. So you go 120 degrees, and that's gonna put you on TDC on cylinder five. And then you can go on down the line. So um, again, we've already checked, we've already adjusted these, but we thought it'd be good to do a video. So um, yeah, we're a little snug there, but we're good, um, and you heard that snap. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the, the method off of uh, valve lift. 
So, okay, so number two, the intake is opening. So we're gonna roll the engine clockwise until the intake valve comes over center. Then it's not critical how far, as long as it's come to max lift and it's on the back side. Um, so we're gonna check our exhaust, which again, we've already adjusted. Um, but, and this one is a little snug, so we might have to readjust that. Oh, sorry, let's go a little further coming up. So yeah, that one's a little snug. We'll go back and check it, but 22 does fit. Um, and let's find one. Let's catch the exhaust just opening. Okay, so number three here, exhaust just started to open. So on that, you would do the intake, which there we go. So now let's roll this around, watching the cylinder number three, exhaust open, intake starts to open. We keep turning clockwise until the intake starts to close. And then that is when we would check the exhaust. So see, dead on. So when you go back to number two and check it again at TDC, it's probably within a thousandths, but you hear that snap, that's dead on. So uh, like I said, it, what, no matter what engine this is, gas, diesel, uh, if you have an aftermarket cam, this is a really good way to do it. And also if you're not sure if your factory timing mark is accurate, um, if it's hard to get to, uh, this is just a good method to do it. You just take your time and always double check as you're going back around doing other ones. If you grab a valve and you feel a lash, just check it. If it's loose, if it's ever loose after you adjusted it, then you did not have the uh, cam in the right position when you adjusted it. So like I said, it's always good to bounce back around and double check them. Uh, but you know, a good method. Uh, and like I said, when you're running an aftermarket cam, uh, it's not accurate to go off the time mark in the, in the service manual procedure. So hopefully this helps. Uh, um, so yeah, valve lash made easy. Thanks.